Why hello folks, Denobi2 here. Thank you for joining me once again on another visual tour. On this episode, we're going to be unboxing the Endgame Rescue Suit. As I like to give credit where credit is always due, this particular figure came directly from Line Rock Toys, a Hong Kong retailer uh, that specializes in free shipping in one six scale collectibles. I ended up picking this up. Yes, I bought it with my money with a slight discount. And I also picked up additional figures from this particular online retailer and a joint uh, agreement. I'm going to give them a little bit of my love and attention. I would recommend that if you are looking uh, for those uh, third party figures or any type of accessories, or if you like saving a quick buck, I would recommend checking out Line Rock Toys and uh, adding in, bookmarking it uh, to one of your regular hunting spots. Because you never know, you could end up scoring a good deal. All right, enough of that. Uh, let's get uh, this uh, visual tour started. I want to start off by saying that I prefer Infinity War over Endgame, 100%. I saw Infinity War in theaters three times. I only saw Endgame once. It broke my heart. Plain and simple, Endgame was an, an emotional roller coaster for me. It, it really was. It had a lot of good points. It had a lot of downers. Um, it really signified to me that this is it. The whole 10-year run of the MCU is done, Denobi. Move on with your life. What are you going to do? Uh, I felt, uh, I remember, because I took the kids and the wife, I remember when I left the theaters, I, I felt very uh, um, empty. Like, what do I do now? Like, I felt lost. It was so surreal. Two years ago. I'm, I'm really looking forward to this figure. The rescue suit. I mean, this is long overdue. Pepper Potts, I mean, it, it was just... It made sense. Why didn't she have a suit from the very beginning? If anything, I mean, well, she had the Iron Man 3 Mark 42, but that was a temporary uh, suit and then in an, made in an emergency for her. What what I'm really looking forward to as, as I'm unboxing this, because it was, I kind of like took my time uh, and just really studied it. I, I have so many Iron Man suits, so many Iron Man figures. This is the first female suit and then not only is it the first female you know iron woman suit but it's also die cast so there's a lot on the plate here for me to to absorb to to study to uh, kind of figure out what's going on here uh, because up until this point the iron man suits always came second nature to me i knew what to expect i knew where the joints are uh yeah there was there was major uh technological improvements from Hot Toys throughout the years, the, the die-cast suits just kept getting better. Uh, but I, didn't, I wasn't sure what to expect with this. And I know there's a few other uh, YouTubers out there who, who did some reviews. I purposely ignored them because I wanted to go in, into this blind. I wanted to uh, really share my experience and as I unbox this. And the first thing that kind of like not shock, but I found surprising was the weight. Uh, I've gotten used to, this panel by the way, um, it did snap off. I thought it was broken, I thought that's where the batteries are, but that panel did kind of snap off. Uh, it was it was the actual weight of the figure. I, I'm used to a certain weight when it comes to holding a die cast Iron Man, Iron Man suit, but I guess this would be an Iron Woman suit, right? I can't, well it's, it's an Iron suit, it's part of the Tony Stark family, but uh, to be somewhat PC, it is Pepper Potts uh, Iron Woman suit. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. Uh, this is probably the first time you can hear me say I would. I am really looking forward to a variant reissue on this. I would love to own this female Iron Woman suit in hot rod cherry red. I would. I would eat it up uh, because there's so much potential. When I look at this figure, I'm like, wow, this is like the first female. Iron Woman suit that we got into the 1-6 category and uh, they went all out. They went all out on this design and then some. I, I really do think. It's getting pricey though. I have to confess it's uh, it's starting to really uh, uh, get up there when it comes to uh, collecting and 
these suits uh I, you know, just for the record, I don't prefer them in plastic. I really am loving the whole die cast and the components into it. I guess if they were still making them plastic, it'd be a little bit uh, more economical. But I prefer the die cast. It feels real. I know that's a, a, a little bit odd to say, but it helps bring that illusion to realism, to, to life. I love everything about this suit. I really, really do. They really did a bang-up job capturing the, the, the female essence uh, in a Tony Stark Iron Man suit or Iron Woman suit. The head sculpt. The head sculpt here looks okay. I, I don't know what to... I don't know what I'm feeling. Um, even after when I filmed it, I looked at it. I'm like, it looks okay. Uh, it's sculpted hair, I guess. I mean, it's not like you could have added rooted hair with a, with a helmet. Pepper Potts has never gotten a lot of love from Hot Toys, to be honest here. Uh, I think the last time she was in a figure form was back in Iron Man 3. And that film came out in 2013, which is this right here. That's her uh, extremist uh, outfit there. And even then, when they finally decided to make Pepper Potts, she was, you know, she, she came half naked. It, it, there wasn't much respect there. I'm comparing the head sculpt here and the rooted hair because I... I'm getting the ideas. Like, I wonder if this would fit inside the suit. So, it is a different head sculpt. I thought, if anything, they, they took a shortcut. But no, you can see, like, the, the, the eyebrows and the, the upper part of the eyes. It is a completely different head sculpt. I thought they were just going to take this outdated head sculpt from 2013 and just kind of mold it into the helmet. But no. This is me kind of experimenting here. Doing my little experiment. And I thought, well, maybe I can just pop the head on there. I'm like, I wonder how I can get... This Pepper Potts, because I think it would look really cool. I think it would look really attractive to have Pepper Potts, the actual head, on this body. So, I'm getting some ideas here. The neck attachment comes off, and you can kind of see the exposed uh, components on there, wiring, gizmos, and all that, uh, screws and doohickeys. And, because I am a Fison kit basher, I happen to have a Fison female body that I destroyed in a kit bashing gone wrong, but I'm able to sal salvage the neck component, which is nice and soft uh, silicone rubber there, which fits j in just nice. Now with a little bit of modification and a little bit of Denobi 2 pizzazz, uh, Pepper Potts looks good, <laughs> right? Like, oh, this looks nice. Something about the rooted hair and uh, just having her exposed like neckline just works. I'm like, oh, this is really, really cool. Like, I feel like Hot Toys kind of missed the boat on this. And because it's a female suit, uh, I had to see, well, maybe Black Widow. And I'm like, oh, she looks good in this suit too. <laughs> uh, so I, I'm gonna keep this. I don't know if I'm gonna pick up another Pepper Pot suit. I'm hoping, fingers crossed, that they'll make a variant version of this female suit because uh, I would love to have uh, maybe like Black Widow with her own suit or maybe a, another variant. She looks great. Look at that. It's always one of those questions like why didn't Tony ever just make make her a suit? You know, she's out there swinging a baton and like a jump rope and like body tasers. Uh, <laughs> did you go up against Thanos? <laughs> Everybody else has like weapons of mass destruction and she's out there swinging a baton. I mean, it's ridiculous. <laughs> All right, let's get back to the unboxing. I got distracted there. Uh, articulated hands and fingers. Uh, yes. Yes, uh, that's that's going to happen. Yes, I, I love the articulated fingers, so I'm going to put those aside. Instructions, which at that point I thought I wasn't going to need, but I did need them because I didn't know how... It's 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 the, it's a whole battery component. I don't know. Every time there's a new diecast Iron Man suit, the battery compartments tend to change their locations. <laughs> uh, this little energy blaster here, this, this is cool. This looks like something uh, Jor-El, uh, the son of Krypton, would would come into Earth. That's kind of cool, isn't it? And I got my little black light here because I'm getting ideas. I want to see if this is a this energy disruptor here, this energy blast is black light sensitive. Cause uh, I don't know. I, I have a black light setup with the neon tech suits. Maybe 
I can use this energy disruptor discharge on there. So, for the record, it is black light sensitive. Nothing else uh, seems to. I'm doing the uh, the black light test here, and parts of the base tend it tends to glow, but this energy blast here is black light sensitive. Uh, so I I'll do something with that later. All right, oh, let's get these batteries out of here. Uh, the yeah, because I'll need those batteries. I'm definitely gonna use the batteries. Uh, the suit flaps with the invisible uh, arm, acrylic arm on there. Oh, they're and they are articulated too. They do flap. I don't know where these things would come. Well, I guess, yeah, I guess it's part of the nanotech. Yeah, I guess I guess the rescue suit is part of the nanotech. So components of her suit do tend to materialize. Some of that Tony Stark magic. Yeah, that whole nanotech. Boy, they just got lazy, didn't they? Do you like it? Nanotech. I'm huh, Bruce. Just suits materialize nothing. It's yeah, the, at that point. By the time we got to Infinity War, like yeah, whatever. It's either that or or, or the iron suit is going to materialize out of a wristwatch. So I uh, I'll I'll buy it. All right, I'll accept that. His whole entire defense mechanism suit is being generated out of his uh, arc reactor. Batteries, folks, batteries. It is so important to test the figures with the batteries. It just is, all right? It just is. Don't be lazy. Don't half-ass it. Put the batteries on there. I know it is It is surgery. It is a pain in the butt. But man, oh man, this suit shines. This suit, when it's fully powered up, it just shines. And the, the old age-old question of, of beating the dead horses, why is Hot Toys still uh, using the little button cell batteries and, and, the, and the components and so forth? And, you know, I, I for a while there I would say, well, it, it, it's, it's cheaper because of the R&D, because if you want like an induction base. But I'm beginning to believe now that I feel that with this particular suit, there's what? There's one, uh, there's a battery compartment in the back, two in the arm, two in the thighs, one, so it's what? It's five, six, if you include the head. The amount of R&D and plastic molding and wires and components for the batteries, I, I think now exceeds, in my honest opinion, exceeds the R&D where they would have just ran micro wires throughout the body to the lights and then just have the induction uh, coils at the bottom of the feet would probably at this point be cheaper than the amount of R&D and uh, tooling that is needed for all these battery components. I can, I can understand if there's maybe just one battery component in a suit. I can see that, all right? All right, Hunter, it's cheaper. But when you have suits like the Mark 46 and the 47 and the Mark 85 where there's just little LED lights all over the body. I, I think it, the Mark 85 even has LED lights on the shoulder pads. At that point, you have to ask yourself, wouldn't it just be better to invest in the, in the R&D? And again, how much R&D is it? You're not having to adjust the molding. You would probably use even less plastic, I would imagine, because you wouldn't even need a battery plastic. You're just running the micro wires through the joints and through the body and having the induction copper coils at the bottom of the feet. But I guess, how would you, I mean, because the, the legs are probably manufactured separately. I would imagine you would just have like a connector, like a wire connector. You know, when you're connecting like a speaker to like a main stereo. So I guess you would still need some sort of type of connector. So maybe that's where the R&D would go for that. I don't know. I'm throwing ideas here. You guys have to help me out. But at this point, with with all the battery components, they it just I think it'd be better. Uh, the breastplate there. Look at that actual breastplate. Get it? And uh, just fits in just right. Well, I did wanted to show that to you. Uh, I discovered in the instruction book here that that the energy disruptor here uh, connects and it creates a a beacon of hope, I guess, or a satellite. It's kind of cool. It has that Star Trek feeling. Ah, you know me, my Star Trek mind gets it. It kind of looks like a like a like a starship, like a solar shell. Thing. Black light effect. Isn't that cool? 
This is me. This is what happens when I get distracted and I'm unboxing a video. I'm like, I wonder what I can do with this. <laughs> uh, all right. All right. Let's. Uh, <laughs> it does look like Star Trek. Leave me alone. It does. I think it does. All right. Let's power her up. Let's power this thing. This thing is beautiful. Be 1,000. It is 1,000% this thing at in the dark. Once you run the energy, once once you turn on that arc reactor in her chest, she comes alive. This is pretty. I like this. Yeah, I if I could just, I would love to keep her on like this all the time. But you know these little button cell batteries. You get five, ten minutes, which I'm essentially blowing it on the review. These batteries are going to die out. And I took some photos. I took some nighttime photos, so she should looks somewhat pretty pr pretty nice I, I'll, I'll show that to you but uh, it's just it's just gorgeous yeah and it's tough I know there's a lot of Marvel characters still left on the table but I would honestly recommend don't don't pass this one up uh, I, I, who knows we may never get another female Iron Woman suit again I mean honestly a, a, a reissue on this? I don't know. I don't know if they would ever reissue this. Uh, I, yeah, I don't know. It's that's a tough one. Overall, I love it. I love the figure. I'm actually rooting for a variant. I would love to have this particular suit in red and the hot rod chair red. And uh, this is going to be a nice, fine addition. So this is fun. This was super fun. So at the end of the video. Uh, uh, final thoughts. I want to give one last shout out to Line Rock Toys, which they are partners. They are a sister uh, retailer to KG Hobby. You guys know them. I buy tons of Fison. The owner knows me. I, this is how I build my little Fison dioramas and my uh, Joker's Club and all my little uh, kit fashion adventures with Fison. Uh, they all come from KG Hobby. So they are good peeps, good pricing, and so forth. So. Uh, that's where all my Fison's come from. And then some. So, like, subscribe, leave your comments below, and uh, don't don't pass up. I know there's a lot of good stuff out there. Think twice. Think twice. Pass up on that battle damage Thanos. You don't need another Thanos. Alright? You got plenty of Thanos out there. They're, 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 those things will get discounted. But a Pepper Pots? No. Think twice.